What is going on? We are back in black in the building. Shout out to everybody out there at the Court Plantation. If you know what you got to do to survive. Man, I am back in black. You already know who I am. I'm your boy, your host, Warren Gene. The place to be. Been clowning sucker free since 2003. Shout out to everybody out there, man. We're going to get it in, man. Another mass shooting. We're going to talk about it. But before we talk about that, I'm going to talk about that god-awful performance by Rihanna. That was horrible. They should have got somebody else at the Super Bowl. Cheryl Lee Ralph, you should be ashamed of yourself bucking your eyes and singing that song the way you singing that song. So you should be ashamed of yourself and you should you should not sorry about that. No fucking and you should not think for one second I didn't see all that bucking of the eyes. Shout out to everybody at the Core Plantation again. We're going to get into it. Let's handle it. Hey. Man, did y'all see that? First of all, the Super Bowl, it was okay. I didn't like what Patrick Mahomes said. Oh, my God, Andy Reid, he may be a better man. No white man can make a black man a better man. Sorry. I don't even know why you said that. That man that man sees you as a commodity, and that's it. He don't give a fuck about the well-being of who you are. If you couldn't play football, you wouldn't even be dealing with him. So, I'm sorry. I don't agree with that. Uh, the halftime show by Rihanna was fucking horrible. Nobody gives a fuck that you're pregnant, in my personal opinion. And I do not... And I'll say it again, I do not appreciate her involvement in the railroading of Chris Brown's career. Yes, maybe Chris Brown was a little volatile and, you know, he's made amends. But that does not negate the fact that you was hitting him upside the head with a sidekick phone. To me, I believe both parties were involved and both careers should have been railroaded, not just his as a black man. And a lot of these tethers, coons and sambos that come here and immigrants that come from other countries. To me, a lot of times they take pleasure in doing sucker shit like that. So, and I did not give a fuck about seeing that bitch pregnant because that has nothing to do with the overall involvement of the Super Bowl. And Cheryl Lee Ralph bucking your eyes singing the black national anthem and you are not a foundational black American. And just bucking your eyes and singing ooh, song. Get the fuck out of here. So I had to address that. I said, this is God awful. You know, and I like Patrick Mahomes and all that. And that dude, Kelsey, whatever. You know, ah, I don't care about you doing the Dougie and dating sisters and all this other shit. I, I'm not impressed by that. That's that Tim Wise bullshit. Matter of fact, where the fuck is Tim Wise at? All this racial injustice going on. Where is he? Probably peddling his bullshit to sucker ass niggas that believe in that shit. Shout out to my brother Dave from No Compromise. Shout out to my brother James Youngblood, Tasi Shana, Erica, Phil in the building. You already know what it is. So let's talk about it. Another mass shooting. Do y'all know it's been shooting after shooting after shooting after shooting? It, it, it is, it's becoming unsafe to be in certain places. That's why I don't like, man, when I go to Yard House, and I rarely go, I rarely go often. A lot of times I don't. For the most part, I don't even eat at Yard House. I'll take my food to go. Because when you eat, you want to be comfortable. And I'm not comfortable in places like that because of just the fear of somebody running up in there and getting to the dumping while you're comfortable. So I, I, I'm very, very not comfortable with that. And I just noticed it's a lot of mass shootings. And we're going to see what they're talking about today. So let's see. It's loading. Welcome to who? 
is talking. Hold on. It's a commercial going. After the commercial, then we will resume. I don't play commercials on my show because I'm not getting no pub or ad time. So the fuck out of here. Let's see. And now. Start with a brief recap of the incident yesterday. This tragic situation unfolded shortly before 8.30 p.m. Uh, the first call that we received was from Berkey Hall. Berkey Hall is an academic building on our <coughs> northern campus. My question is, all these schools with these large endowments, y'all don't have security with guns? Y'all don't remember that kid at Virginia Tech, that Asian kid, who that professor told their, their boss, hey, man, this kid has got issues, and y'all might really need to really look at this kid. They look at him, he went and Vitek and started shooting up everybody. At borders downtown East Lansing. Initial calls reported shots fired in that building, and there was an absolutely overwhelming police response to that initial call. We had officers in that building within minutes, and in that building, they encountered several students who were injured. We can confirm that two of the deceased were in Berkey Hall, along with several of the victims. The shooter must not be black, because if he was, they would have his face plastered all over the fucking news. While the officers were managing that scene at Berkey Hall, we began receiving additional reports of another shooting at the MSU Union Building, just to the west of Berkey Hall. Oh, so this was planned and thought out. Right on the corner of Abbott and Grand River. Officers redeployed to that location where we did locate one additional victim. We do have three total deceased and five uh, victims at the hospital. We can confirm that all three deceased were MSU students. We can also confirm at this time that all five of the injured victims at the hospital. This is why we need to start teaching our children awareness, safety. Stop getting so complacent at these colleges and not thinking that people won't pull it. We're also MSU students. We will release the names of those students later today. Once we work through some notifications and make sure that the family's aware that we're going to release those names. The suspect in this case was located at approximately 1135 p.m. in the city of Lansing. What's his name, Beyonce? What's his name? The suspect was located by units that were assisting in looking for that suspect after the shootings. The suspect is deceased due to a self-inflicted gunshot wound. And we are prepared to release the name of the person who committed these homicides at this time. We have previously confirmed that he was 43 years old. He's a male. His name is Anthony. Last name is McRae. M-C-R-A-E. Anthony. Anthony McRae. Let's see if he's white or black. I'm surprised they named the shooter. You know, so let's see. Dwayne McRae is a 43-year-old male. We would like to sincerely thank our community for their help. Because of our quick release of the, photo, the photograph from the campus security cameras and the help from our community, it was a caller's tip that led law enforcement to that suspect in the city of Lansing. We cannot thank the public and the community and the person who called in that report enough for being observant, for following our messaging, and for, for being vigilant and a brother no wonder they spelled it no wonder see 
When it's a white shooting, we don't know who it is. The suspect is still at large, but it's a brother. Oh, he killed himself, whatever. Of course, of course. I should have known. Protecting us immediately. Wow. Let's cut the music back on. Yeah, I'm looking. Uh, let's see. Anthony McCray, so I'm looking at him. That looked like a white man in that video, though, in that, that footage. Wow. I wonder what that brother was going through. I wonder if that brother's an FBA brother. Whoever the brother is, you know. It's a sad thing, man. But we have to start teaching our kids. Don't just think because you're out of college that you're safe. Don't think this because you at a restaurant and casino that you're safe. You know, this is a war where no man is safe. And that's sad that it's a brother. And I should have known at first. I was like, this must not be no brother. Because that's the first thing they leave with, if I'm wrong, is, oh, the the the, the brother is, you know, it's his name. is such, such, such. But you notice every time it's a brother, they spell his name out in detail. <laughs> is it that sad that those kids lost their lives? Yes. Is that sad? The brother might have been going through something. Yes, I don't think that's the way you deal with it, you know, but we've had so many shootings the last 10 years, mass shootings in the theaters. You know, we had the October, one October out here in Vegas. It's just mass shootings and mass shootings. I just think we need to start to understand and know what your, your surrounding and your awareness is. That's why even when I go to the gym, I'm not very comfortable. I'm always looking around. I'm always staring and looking at everybody. When I'm at a restaurant, I cannot get comfortable when I'm at a restaurant. Matter of fact, when I last time I went to strip, I wore some whiteout contact lenses to fuck with everybody on the strip. Had everybody scared moving out my motherfucking way because you just don't know, man. You don't know who's going to try to pull it at what time, when, even in my neighborhood. You know, I'm very aware of neighbors and, you know, if I don't see a car, I don't know who the per who that car is or who it belongs to. I'm very, very cautious and aware because you just, it's a different time and a different element. So I think we have to do a better job, to me, of, of, of having awareness and knowing your surroundings. You know, and that's sad that those, those students lost their lives. I think that's real fucked up. I think that that brother... Whatever mental illness or whatever he had going on, I think he could have handled it a whole different way. I don't condone that. That's fucked up. And uh, I think we as a people, to me, we as a people, we have to start listening to each other and understanding that. Stop judging each other by what kind of shit they got on and judge a person by the contents of their character. Because remember, we're on the same team. Dr. Carl Anderson says racism is a team sport. So let me tell you something. Now, every nigga on every campus is going to be looked at crazy and upside their motherfucking head. You know what I mean? And I just look at that, and I was just watching the symbolism during the Super Bowl, and I was like, no diss to Jay-Z, no diss to Beyond, no diss to them, but we don't need any more symbolism. We need black owners in the NFL. We don't need symbolism and niggas performing at the Super Bowl. We don't give a fuck about that. They could have had the honky-tonk man perform. I don't give a fuck about that shit. We need black owners. I don't need Cheryl Lee Ralph singing the goddamn black anthem, black national anthem. What I need is for them to get some black ownership involved with the NFL so we can deal with people that understand who the fuck we are and not just the Jerry Joneses of the world who's sitting outside a mob, a crowd of mob motherfuckers calling black students niggas and shit. Oh, and where the fuck is uh, the motherfucker... That's the head of the UFC that slapped the shit out of his woman. You notice they ain't talking about that white man. That white man slapped the shit out of his bitch in broad daylight. Ain't nobody said shit. Ray Rice slapped the shit out of his woman. He ain't banned from ever. Dana White. Where the fuck is his ass at? I'm going to keep talking about him. Where the fuck is that women's liberation and that ugly Tyrannosaurus looking bitch, Tyrannosaurus Burke? Why are you not talking shit about Dana White slapping the shit out of his bitch? But you want to talk all that shit about R. Kelly. That ugly King Koopa alligator skin looking bitch. Man, fuck that bitch, man. So you got all this energy for black folk, but you ain't got nothing for, for the white folk. Okay, I get it. And I get it. 
I, I, I really do get it, and I understand. But you know what? There's nothing I can say or nothing I can do but say this. We need to be prepared at all times. You are a prisoner of war in the system of racism, white supremacy, according to Nilly Fuller Jr., which I do believe. And you're an infantile person in this system. So don't get too comfortable. I don't care how much money you got. Don't get too comfortable. Because these things happen all the time. We don't know what that brother was on. It could have been a Manchurian candidate. Of course he shot and killed himself. So now we don't know what the fuck he was on. But eventually it'll come out. Somebody will get to the bottom of it. But you do what you need to do. Now that the Super Bowl is over, what you going to do now? Oh, man, the Super Bowl. Now what other team you going to go cheer for? While they making millions of dollars and you ain't making shit. I wonder how many people that was cheering for the Super Bowl got 401k, stocks, bonds, life insurance policies. I wonder how many people got that. I'll rest my case. Guilty, nigga. I'm out. Peace.